what to look for tonight. MVP numbers, and I'm talking about Corliss Williamson. 23 points, 10 rebounds, 60%. That's what he's done in the tournament. Has a chance to be a repeat. MOP, most outstanding player. Family affair, the O'Bannon brothers. Tremendous job in this tournament. 29 points, 12 rebounds. They could come back and really help in this ball game. They need to pick it up today. Press or not to press. Arkansas steals against UCLA turnovers. If Edney can't go 100%, that could be a big advantage for Arkansas, obviously. The bench. And in this particular case, Arkansas, a huge advantage. They're outscoring their opponents 138 to 45, and the Bruins bench is reduced if Edney can't go. Calling the championship game, the officials, Jim Burr, Ted Valentine, John K. Hill with the alternate Bob Donato. Congratulations to that group for making it to the last game. Jim, we have with us tonight, of course, Coach John Wooden, his first national championship with 64. In that game, Fred Slaughter was down a little bit, and a guy by the name of Kenny Washington came off the bench, scored 26 points, and had 11 rebounds. So you never know what can happen in a magic moment like this. Well, Edney's taking the brace off. His right wrist heavily taped. I think we're going to get an indication early because obviously either McDaniel or Beck are going to go right after him when he handles that ball in the dribble.
it's taken away from Edney, and Beck puts it in for two more. Jim, I think Jim Herrick, and he did make the move right away. I think he has seen enough. He's got to go with Cameron. O'Bannon layup in and out, blocked from behind, and Beck was on the line. UCLA ball, and we'll see now Cameron Dollar coming in for Tyus Edney. Dollar, a 6'1 sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia, coached by his father in high school, has a brother, Chad, who played at Clemson this year. Jim, I was thinking the same thing that Jim Harris had to be thinking. He saw it in pickpocket right away on Dollar, and McDaniel lays it in. And boy, now you're going to see Arkansas go for the kill. Charles O'Bannon underneath, and last touch by Beck. We talked about in the top of the show, 94 feet of hell or 94 feet of heaven without Edney in the game. That hell is really going to come on now. Zenix, right by McDaniel. Beck waits for Thurman to fire the three. Rattles out. Dollar ahead. Bailey, though, will keep it on the right wing. Now it comes back to Dollar. Underneath, it's Ed O'Bannon. That pass was intended for Charles O'Bannon. He ought to get an assist on that on the touch. That breaks a Arkansas 10-point run. Now let's see what UCLA is made of in terms of coming back. Well, no other leaders gone. Dollar pull-up jumper. Charles, beautiful. Arkansas in transition. McDaniel ahead and Ed O'Bannon on his back. Charles O'Bannon coming off the great game against Oak State that he had on Saturday. Played 37 minutes, 7 for 9, 19 points six rebounds, and there is a young man who you know has to be heartbroken right now. He tried, Jim, but you could tell that two or three times up the floor, he just couldn't do it. There's no chance. McDaniel hit clutch free throws in the end against North Carolina. McDaniel grew up in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and worshipped the Golden Hurricane when it was coached by Nolan Richardson. It was his dream to one day play for him. Not so only handed over to Fayetteville. Right, not only four for four against North Carolina, that now makes him 17 for 19 in the NCAA tournament. Arkansas really a with a five-point lead. UCLA easily breaking the pressure that time, and that'll send Charles O'Bannon to the line. Now, we have seen one coaching move already. Jim Herrick forced to change his point guard situation. Now, how will Nolan adjust on his part does he go after them even further or does he go ahead and not give ucla a chance to play in the open court where they're so successful charles o'bannon the same yesterday we're a close-knit family we feel it is us against the world no one thinks we can achieve what we believe we can achieve and we just use that as a small motivation in helping us achieve our goal Staying back here on deck, but you can't press with one man. Arkansas just tightened. Williamson for two more. We saw him go around with Gene Wallace with that same drop step move on Saturday. Comes right back with it again. Bailey helping out, breaking the press. Zenith banks it home.
tendency to underestimate how long those arms are of Ed O'Bannon and how quick he is. But Martin coming up with another big play. He gets an amazing play from a starter who is almost as a sub, Jim, but does the job. Travel that time. Nolan, Nolan puts his head down, thinking about how much longer do I leave Martin in the game. Stewart's about ready on that sideline. Dollar against McDaniel. McDaniel, one of the top defensive guards in the country. And last touch by Beck. Now what's so difficult for UCLA here is when you have a Tyus Sedney, he sets up your offense by dribble penetration. Dollar not capable of doing that against McDaniel, so it's hard for them to get into their normal offensive pattern. Bailey, no whistle, ball loose, Martin runs it down. Second straight rebound for Martin. Skip pass to McDaniel. Arkansas not going to forget Williamson in the first half like they did against Oak State. Look at him getting position on Zedek inside. He had position, yep. they couldn't get it to him. Well, Martin not the guy to feed, see, because you can lay off Martin. Foul on Dollar. Jim, it's never good to try to have your weakest shooter feeding the postman because his defensive player can drop back inside and double down on Corliss Williamson. So it's good to have a guy like Scotty Thurman making the pass. You lay off Scotty, he's the record holder for three, he'll bury it. Martin's already made one, that one's too strong. Toby Bailey, freshman, would have to come up big here tonight with the absence of Eddie without UCLA to have a chance. Jim, in 1971, when UCLA built, beat Villanova for the championship, eight of the ten players that started that game played all 40 minutes. Tonight, there's going to be some UCLA players out there that have to start thinking about that. And as I said, Stewart comes up off the bench. So they just go to that bench, which has been so productive. Arkansas empty on its last five trips. Make it six. And on the back, Martin collects his second. He'll go out now. Martin, a high school teammate at Fairley High School in Memphis of Corey Beck and the man who replaces him, Dwight Stewart. All three of them played high school ball together and now closing out their college careers as seniors this evening. And of course, got here by winning against Memphis in Memphis in overtime. In well, Kansas City, right? In Kansas City. Yeah. Back to Dollar. Wrap around pass. No one there. But you've got to think who you're throwing it to. Zidick can do a lot of things, but he's not going to be that gifted on the short interior pass. Score stuck on 16-12 for a while. Scotty Thurman hadn't gotten into the offense. They're going to call that on back for pushing off on Dollar. That's the second on Beck. There's a big whistle there because yes, uh, Dollar already had one also. And remember Corey Beck in that Memphis game against Chris Garner got in all kinds of foul trouble. And one of the things we were looking forward to tonight regarding a potential matchup with Edney. Already within three of their tournament average in turnovers.
O'Bannon and Stoudemire shared Player of the Year honors in the Pac-10. UCLA doing a nice job, dropping back, picking up strictly in the half court. Stewart, who had such an outstanding game in the semifinals. Diller, a little too high off the glass. Good breakthrough by Dollar. Zedek, outside, Zedek, the old roommate of Tyus Edney. He credits Edney for his career lasting so long at UCLA. He was ready to give it up after two years. But Edney told him to stay. Good things would come. Great play by Charles O'Bannon. And ahead they go. Ed to Charles to Ed. To the... Jim, that's what I mentioned about Nolan Richardson maybe having to make a decision. Without Edney in there, he may be able to play these guys half court at time. Where UCLA scores is when they can get into that 94 feet of heaven. Stewart reverse. Nice move by the big man. You talked about Edney being the guy that kept Zidick in school at UCLA. How about the fact that Corey Beck is the guy that talked Nolan Richardson into bringing Stewart along? The point guards were thinking even when they weren't playing. There's McDaniel with a second steal tonight. Three on two. Dillard. Smart defense by Charles O'Bannon. He wouldn't give him the jump shot, made him put it on the floor. And a three-second violation on the Hogs. Arkansas went almost four minutes without a field goal, and it's 18-17 Razorbacks. As we mentioned in the pregame, 94 feet of heaven. Now watch how UCLA creates their offense off the defense. The ball goes into Corlin. We have five men in this play, but they will all take off on the break, and Cameron Dollar will start it. And once he starts it, watch this team operate. Five men on the break. Even Zedek traveling. One brother back to the other brother. They score. Excellent transition game on offense. 18-17, Arkansas. A dollar cannot break him down with his dribble, however. Henderson blocked by Darnell Robinson, who enters the game. Davor Remots, number 22, also into the Razorback lineup. Meanwhile, Toby Bailey has come back. Henderson. Henderson kept it alive, but out it comes to Clint McDaniel. Only one starter on the floor right now, Jim, for Arkansas. But remember, with that depth, they can wear people down. And there's the starter with the ball, McDaniel. Even Big Country Reeves said, I got tired in the game against UCLA. You can imagine what it would be like in this game. And on the shot clock. They're not worried about Robinson doubling down as much as they were. Robinson have to put it up. Great defense by UCLA. Well, you go again to that bench, which Nolan Richardson has showed us time and time again that he has so much confidence in various lineups. Give him a lot of credit for that. Well, look, Arkansas has eight turnovers as well. We've been tracking the Bruins, but Arkansas also sloppy here early. Little zone defense trapping out of the zone. Charles O'Bannon. Nice shot by Robinson, although his feet still hurt him, and he only is about 60% as far as his ability to run. Did a good job on defense there. Kingdome, Seattle, the 63rd game of the 1995 tournament. This one for the crown. Jim Nance and Billy Packer, Arkansas and UCLA midway through the first half. Darnell Robinson. That gives Arkansas a three-point lead, 2017. We saw Robinson and Wilson, the twin towers of Arkansas, in the game on Saturday. Expect to see it again today, both of them being very productive in the tournament. Ed O'Bannon off the glass like John Wood loved it. Terrific job. He looked for the pass as well as the shot. You're exactly right, Jim. That was vintage Wood, the jumper off the board. Always use the glass. Yep. McDaniel. Hacked on the way in. They say actually with the body, Henderson. J.R. Henderson, freshman who in his second college game hit two free throws with six tenths of a second left to beat Kentucky. And now Zedek comes in for Charles O'Bannon. 
Jim, we start talking about straight NCAA wins. Arkansas tonight with 11. The Bruins under Woodman at one time won 38 straight NCAA tournament games. You have to remember back in some of those years, obviously, they only played four games for the national championship. McDaniel has eight of Arkansas's 21 total. Nolan Richardson doesn't go full court pressure. Now he traps out of the half court zone. Really moving those feet. This is what gave North Carolina so much trouble in the second half. And to Zedek. Dollar thought about a three. Gives it up now. Zedek off balance. Remont grabbed it to himself. And stolen by Ed O'Bannon. Boy, he's been reading that all night. Finally got one. Bailey had it on his hip, now off the glass. Well, Saturday we talked about the freshman factor. Would they be phased? They didn't have big offensive production in that game, but Bailey played great defense. Shows you there, this is a young man with tremendous potential. No question. He had 26 in the West Final against UConn. His defense against Rutherford was outstanding. Three waves short of the mark by Stewart. Who hit one from beyond midcourt to end the half on Saturday. Jim, a one positive factor for UCLA with Edney out. Dollar is a better defender. And this team on the floor, if they can stay fresh, and I'm talking about UCLA, is a very good defensive ball club. Best differential between defensive and offensive percentage of anybody in the Pac-10. Ball on the floor, loose ball, lost by Arkansas. You're talking about a team that shoots 51%, holds their opponents to 40%. That's a differential of 11, which is huge. And there's that 2-3 zone again. Really heavy pressure on the ball. Hook shot. There it is. Old-fashioned kind of that. You saw that coming. He was in perfect position to take. Stewart spinning and traveling. Well, Zedek says, I have to have this in my arsenal to make up for my limited athletic ability. Well, there was the perfect hook shot move. I mean, it, it's not Kareem Jabbar, fans, but that's as good an old-time hook shot as you'll see in college basketball. Corliss Williamson back in. Jim, he comes in at 6.06. They're playing the zone, and now you have a semi-twin towers as Robinson stays in the game. Scotty Thurman in as well, and oh, look Thurman, at his hand. Thurman just stripped it right away from a not-looking Henderson, and now Williamson misses the short one. Bruins everywhere, but the ball tipped out thanks to the hustle of Corliss. Back to the big man. Nice shot by Bailey. Look at this. It's Williamson against four Bruins. They're going to overrule the call. Sensational defensive play by Bailey. Against one of the best inside closer in the business. Watch Bailey come across to help out and get his hand up. Making life miserable for Corbin. It'll be UCLA basketball with the lead when we come back. At this beautiful setting of Seattle, let's reflect for a moment. The last time UCLA won the national championship. Did you know that March 31st, 75, number one song, Minnie Ripperton, Loving You, Hawaii Five-0, the number one TV show, Godfather 2, movie. And Billy Packer, you were broadcasting your first of now 21 Final Fours. Coach Wooden's last memorable moment in San Diego. And Jim, remember earlier on when I said Nolan Richardson has a thought to make. Do I keep pressing this UCLA team where they have that open court area to score? Do I drop back and play a little zone and trap them? He's decided to try this move. 2-3 zone, pressure on the ball, not giving UCLA that wide open court to operate in. Seen it from the corner. Thurman. There's those quick hands. O'Bannon with face. Brilliant move. Well, his coach said he had the greatest run of five games of anybody in college basketball, and that's one of the reasons why. He's so versatile. Well, he's hit five out of six from the field. Ziller gunning. Yes, three-pointer. Normally doesn't score off the dribble, but 
Josie has that in his arsenal too. And he gets off the snide in Seattle. Oh, push off. No right. call. Didn't right. right. by with that one. Hook shot. Well, he's trying to set up for it. But the Razorbacks got in the pack. Bailey to the line for a couple as Robinson hammered him. Near the conclusion of this game, we'll be selecting the Chevrolet players of the game. In conjunction with the award, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to the general scholarship fund of each school. The Bruins for UCLA to bring back Charles O'Bannon. Henderson out. UCLA had a poster in its locker room all season long as we see Corey Beck come back with the two fouls. It's a poster of the Kingdome in Seattle. Took a visit here when they came up to play the University of Washington just to say, guys, it's a place you want to come back to. Toby Bailey, who will shoot one more. There's his dad, John, a UCLA graduate and a parole officer back in L.A. But Toby Bailey's dad keeps coming every day. And look at that poster. Oh, that's Corey Beck's third, Jim. He reached in on O'Bannon. Poked him he in the eye. Yeah, he comes in the game and picks up his third. It reminds you of the Memphis game where he got in such serious foul trouble. Now, what's happening here? Edney out with injury. Beck out in foul trouble. Almost an even matchup. Second time, Ed's gotten poked. Jim, yesterday, he received an award as the RCA Player of the Year. The award is a big, heavy piece of glass on marble. He held it above his head. The glass fell out, wasn't attached, came down and grazed his head. His father, a former wide receiver, caught it in midair. He said it was one of the greatest catches he's ever made in UCLA history. Well, he didn't have any reception in UCLA, so <laughs> yeah. it was his only reception well, right. in UCLA it history. Was the immaculate But reception. he played on the team in 1971. Right, 71. Great family here. They were all here to watch their son receive the award.
back against one of the nation's premier running big men, Corliss Williams. And they have forced Arkansas to play half court at a time. Bannon. Brother retrieves. Jimmy's playing like a safety man in a prevent 
like he might have traveled. Right. He though, traveled though. before the timeout. The officials didn't see it. Well, they grant the timeout to Arkansas. 150 remaining first half. UCLA 36-32. Coming up, Pennzoil at the half. A live two-way with President Clinton. The first fan who was there last year in Charlotte when the Razorbacks took down the Nets. Well, Jim, he may be the best political man in regard to being a fan, but the best political Democrat as far as being a Final Four man was Bill Bradley, the great senator from New Jersey. Right out here. He, he still holds the record in two games of 87 points, was the MOP of the tournament back in 65 and scored 58 points in the consolation game. Took place in Seattle. That's something that maybe Coach Wooden will talk about because in the championship game of that tournament, Gail Goodrich had 42 against Michigan and didn't get the MOP of the tournament. It went to Dollar Bill, Senator Bill Bradley, a great player from Princeton. Well, Arkansas got away with a travel, but that's a timeout. Later in the game, a little one they may need. McDaniel, well, got a three off of it, cuts it to one. Nice offensive set there. In Arkansas, you're exactly right, Jim. They had a turnover and end up, instead of turning over the ball, get off a good shot. Dollar comes out of the double team, but throws a soft pass that then is deflected by Dollar into Bailey's hand. Nobody back. And McDaniel ahead for an easy two and the lead. UCLA tried to convert unnecessarily when they had the numbers. Dollars penetration left nobody back. Arkansas has come back from eight down to go up one. UCLA has to give up the ball. saying 
UCLA had very quick hands. They uh, played great defense, and I'm, I'm looking forward to an <laughs> exciting second half. I think that our team uh, and their team, it's a, it's a wonderful game so far, but you got to give it to UCLA. They played great defense, and they got a lot of very good shots on offense, and uh, I think that's why they're a point ahead. I know you've tried to watch a few of Arkansas's games this season. Do you have any fingernails left? Or the games have been such nail biters throughout the tournament. <laughs> Yeah, they always give us a lot of thrills. Uh, basketball is exciting enough on its own, but they give us a little extra every game. Uh, we, we try to have a cardiologist at every uh, watching party that we have. Mr. President Quinn Buckner, did you fill out your okay. brackets this year? Did I what? Did you get a chance to fill out the brackets at the beginning of the tournament? No, I didn't, and I wish I had, but uh, I would have been wrong on all accounts except I expected these two teams to be in the finals. Otherwise, there were a lot of surprises along the way. Mr. President, we know you're very athletic, and uh, earlier uh, this week, on uh, Friday, I think, you were in Haiti, and we have some film sh uh, tape of you shooting uh, buckets out there on the grass with some of our uh, good troops down there, and there you put up a bank shot. I don't know if you called her or not. And, uh, and then you shot around at, uh, you shot around in Arkansas State with Arthur Agee uh, from the uh, documentary film Hoop Dreams, and uh, Mike Krzyzewski, who you rooted against last year, is going to go over your form uh, on the, he's going to tell us your form. Well, if you don't mind, this is chance to get even. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, I'm sure you're accustomed to some criticism, so I'm going to critique you. Here's Mr. President in, in the lane. He's not worried about three seconds. Good form, but he doesn't want to show that he's just an inside player. He goes outside, and now he's in, in the outside. Watch that form. Take a look at his hand and the release. It's Very really good, delicate Mr. release, and he, and he puts it through. What do you think, Mr. Not bad. <laughs> what do you think? Feet, I think the feet were on the floor. <laughs> you know, quite honestly, uh, sir, what did you take away from your visit with Arthur Agee today? Well, he's a remarkable young man, you know, and and I, I, what I took away from it is here's a young fellow that, that made up his mind he was going to make something of his life and try to live out his dream. He's committed to continuing his education until he gets his degree. He still wants to play pro basketball, but whatever happens to him, he's going to have a good life, and I hope that uh, Hoop Dreams and I hope that Arthur Agee both uh, serve as a kind of an inspiration to kids all across this country who are growing up in very hard circumstances. They can make it, they can be something. And I'm very grateful that he came down to Arkansas to go to college. He's a terrific young man and I wish him well. President, I know you're also very grateful that the baseball season will begin here at the end of April. I know you followed it very closely. Would you like to throw out the first pitch uh, at the end of April? I, sh I sure hope that I can do that. I'm looking forward to it. And I think it's going to be good for the country to get baseball back uh, on track. I still hope they can get together and actually work out these differences. We don't need a cloud hanging over baseball for another whole season. and They ought to be able to do it. Uh, there are not that many people and there's lots of money there. They can figure out how to divide it. And, and give us the sport back. All right, well, with the Masters coming up, Mr. President, I have to ask you, how many uh, mulligans do you get uh, when you play golf with your friends? <laughs> well, it depends, but I'm trying not to take any anymore. Okay, Maybe one you. off the first tee. <laughs> <laughs> good for you. Mr. President, thank, thank you. you. It's always a pleasure to talk hoops with you. Uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you down Thanks. the road. Thanks. Keep uh, your fingers crossed. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you, sir. Quinn, uh, what about the second half? I, I do. I worry about the fatigue factor. The one thing you've got to know is when you try to replace a player like Tyus Edney, everybody has to pick up, but the emotion that is expended when you play against an Arkansas, Arkansas team has to be a concern. Your, your team is up by one now. You're Jim Herrick. What do you say? Well, we got to watch uh, Williamson, how he did, what he did Saturday coming out in the second half. I think he's going to try to assert himself, and so will Scotty Thurman. Those two guys are the guys who can lead them to, two, to their second national championship. Not too often you can criticize the President of the United States. It's a great uh, country, yeah. right? I'm sure he <laughs> understands. Uh, 20 minutes to play here at the Kingdom. Thank you for watching Penn Goyle at the half. Coming up, the second half is Jim and Billy at courtside. Enjoy the second half. We'll see you right after the game. This year, you can still receive a copy of the official souvenir program. Send a check or money order for $11 to 1995 NCAA Final Four Program, P.O. Box 99128, Louisville, Kentucky, 40269. Please allow four to six weeks for delivery. This message provided by the NCAA. Welcome back to the Hoop Kingdom of the world this week. The Kingdom, Seattle. Let's go back to your report card. Check it out, Billy. What to look for, first M half. MVP numbers, and you say, well, they're not there for Carlos Williamson, but remember what he did in the second half against UNC. 19 points and 7 rebounds. He'll get it going. Count on it. 
The brothers, they have been outstanding, 20 and nine. Remember, they're averaging 29 for the whole game. They're almost up to their average already. Depress or not depress, this is really a dilemma for Nolan Richardson. It looks like he has a big advantage here because he's forced 12 turnovers, but by pressing, he allows UCLA to get in the open court game where they score so well. And the bench, without any question, the big advantage once again for Arkansas, 13 to two, amazing. This has been what's been critical in the tournament for him all year. Billy, Corliss Williamson has five points at halftime. Scotty Thurman played 17 minutes and did not make a shot from the field. He was 0 for 3. Yeah, you can see it right there, Jim. Not only the fact that they have not had big production, they're not touching the ball enough. That's something I'm sure Nolan Richardson's going to work on just as he did Saturday. Second half straight ahead. UCLA 40, Arkansas 39, and we'll return to Seattle after this message and a word from your local station. Ed O'Bannon has 15 for the Bruins. McDaniel 16 for Arkansas as we get set for the second half. And Billy, this position for Arkansas is nothing new in this tournament. It really isn't. And one of the reasons why you like to come from behind, because it gives you confidence no matter where you are. You can see the fact that they've been behind in the second half in every game in this tournament. So this is a confident club, even in that position. Let's get a report quickly from Michelle Tafoya. Michelle? All right, Jim. Well, the word out of the UCLA locker, UCLA locker room, the coaching staff has told me that Tyus Eddie's status will not change at all for the second half. He can't put the ball on the floor. He can't shoot. As far as we know right now, he will not play in the second half. Jim, Billy? You know, Billy, you look at the starting guards for Arkansas, Corey Beck and Clint McDaniel. McDaniel having a big scoring night with 16, but the two of them did not have a single assist in the first half. In fact, for as great a floor general as he is, and Richardson calls him his most outstanding player. It's really surprising. He allows himself to continually get in foul trouble in the first half. Well, remember, Jimmy came in with two fouls and had that reach-in foul before he actually played one second of time his last time on the floor. Bruins, 22-1, when leading at halftime. But that's part of the reason why so many of the Arkansas games come down to the last seconds. There's Wilson inside, gets a starting assignment. The real key for Arkansas gets Scotty Thurman off the snide here in the second half, early. O'Bannon. Feed it. Very nice put back. How is that possible? Nolan Richardson has his twin towers in there, and he go overpowered. Jim 
game, Damon Stoudemire was co-MVP of the Pac-10, but one of the things he said, and I think he's a very smart basketball player, against UCLA, you got to keep people back. <laughs> and here they come again. Charles ahead. Brother to brother and deflected by Beck. I've read a lot of Stoudemire's comments, and I think he's probably the best student of the game that I've heard about in college basketball, but he's absolutely correct. You better have a safety man. Foul before the shot. Stoudemire didn't miss many games this year that were broadcast. He's prides himself on watching them all. Yep. First on Williamson. Now, Jim, one of the things we need to keep looking at all the time is the fatigue factor. That's what Nolan Richardson counts on for the big run in the second half. Look at Bailey climb up for that rebound. One more time, and the freshman on the third chance gets it to go. The second put back for UCLA in this half, and Nolan has his power team on the floor. Scotty Thurman cannot get away from Charles O'Bannon. One shot. Two shots. Three shots. How about that? He was the one who, when they had that poster in the locker room, said all season long he would daydream about what it would be like if they got to the kingdom and played in front of 40,000. Away from the ball, the foul on Wilson. Not a smart foul there. Seedick, no problem on that part of the floor. You see here, he's fighting him when his man isn't yet a threat. You have to move your feet, not grab with your hand. And Wilson is going to be coming out. Stewart coming in. Zedek, two. Oh, a collision. You're not going to win that one when you collide with Corliss. Bailey picks up the foul, his first. You know, a lot of times, the foul would have been called on Corliss because he knocked the other man to the floor, but that was uh, well officiated there because Bailey is the guy that initiated the contact. UCLA guys bending over, grabbing their pants, Jim. This is awful early in the second half to be doing that. Thurman, three. There you go. The first bucket of the night for Thurman. Now on McDaniel. Dauber to the line. Again, this press will force some turnovers for UCLA, but look at how well they convert in the open court. And I'm sure in the days between Saturday and tonight, Nolan Richardson thought many times about what's the best way to play this team. And that was with Edney in the game. First point for Dollar, who was saying before the game that he felt Arkansas's pressure presented some of the problems they faced this year against Arizona State. Key against their pressure is going to be handling the ball and not having many turnovers. How do you think he's done against the press? I think he's done very well, but even more importantly, he's been so solid on defense. UCLA goes in a 2-3 zone. Watch out for Scotty Thurman. Remember how flat they played this zone the other day? They changed it this time now that they've got a different type of team. Steal by the Bruins. There was only, only one outside shooter for Oak State. Now there's more, so they don't flatten down. Great pass by Dollar. Oh, comes out of there with O'Brien. such line drive quick passes on the interior as UCLA. They have great hands on the inside and it really takes away the defense and now he's in the game. Watch these passes. They are so hard. And again, UCLA going to the offensive glass for the third time in this half. Eddie O'Bannon with a three-point play. O'Bannon has moved past Tracy Murray and Trevor Wilson tonight. The fourth all-time score at UCLA. Behind McLean, Alcindor, and Reggie Miller. Corliss in the paint. Nice job by Siddick. Look at this pass. Talk about a bullet. 
double-digit lead for the Bruins. Nolan not going for the timeout, trying to wait for the TV timeout. But that bullet pass is amazing how they can throw it. Thurman. Stewart. O'Bannon reached in. Jim, this is the first time I've seen the Arkansas players kind of confused a little bit. Look at that fire. Our, our director, Bob Fishman, one of his great heroes is Sandy Koufax. Right. I don't know if Koufax could throw any better strike than that one. Had the love of that effort by the right, southpaw. And now Dwight Stewart. What's so tough on that kind of pass is you normally have some English that makes it tough to catch, but that was on the money. Oh, Sandy's talking about it right now. How did he do that? He said, I had a high hard one. That one was a low hard one. He also had a pretty good curveball. But that's not what you wanted to throw on that pass. So, missing the second one, they don't get the under 16 minute timeout. Maybe on the next whistle. Alex Dillard has checked in to the Arkansas lineup along with Darnell Robinson. That's a little give and go, but Ed O'Banion O'Banion can take Stewart Jim on the dribble. Zedek going after the loose ball. Pushes back to the floor. No call. Now we have a timeout. Corliss Williamson, by the way, hasn't scored in over 20 minutes of action. Ruined by nine. It was a superstition, but on Saturday, when John Wooden was watching UCLA on television, he was in St. Louis for the McDonald's High School All-America game. The Bruins were leading Oak State by one with 2.40 to go. And he reached down, took out a baseball cap with UCLA on it, and they scored the last 12 points. I'm really disappointed in Coach. He doesn't have that little program rolled up like he always used to carry with him. Let's send him one. Shot clock. Now the two. They don't they realize don't it. Not in time. Not in time. Jim, how many times have we seen that this year? Teams not realizing they don't have the full complement of seconds. Not a coaching breakdown, but you're just not used to having to get it off that quick. That's the first turnover of the half for UCLA. Stewart, bangs at home. Two-pointer. Nice move by Nolan Richardson. Put, put, put Stewart right in the center of that 2-3 zone where he can step out and shoot that jumper. Very good use of the hat of the timeout. O'Bannon will challenge Stewart. Nope, he'll get double teamed and have it taken away by Beck. Beck in traffic to McDaniel. On the wing, a three. Look at Beck, second leading rebounder from the guard position this year. Swinging around to the three-point giant. He's amazing. Here comes Arkansas, 55-51 UCLA. Dillard, it's got to be a foul. Hey, he fouled him twice before that. Here's a push. Here's another push. And then the third one was a trip. And Jim Herrick's letting the official know it, too. Good job on his part. Stand up, keep those guys alert. Ed O'Bannon, three-pointer. Zedek. Look at this. Boy, the big man from Prague is really battling inside. Now we talked about it earlier. Jim, he was looking to go home when he was so unproductive in his first two years at UCLA on the court, not in the classroom. He has been an All-American academically. But uh, Tyus Edney convinced him to stay, and he has been a very important factor for this team. Changed his name to Yuri, from Yuri to George, and actually wasn't recruited by UCLA until Cherokee Park decided to sign with Duke. And late, Bruins signs Edick. Knocks down two free throws, six-point UCLA lead. I don't see the fatigue factor yet, Jim. They're hanging in there pretty well. Corliss Williamson still rests. Williamson last scored with 16 minutes to go in the first half. That's that confidence that Nolan has in that bench. He's got nerves to steal, I'll tell you that. You'd think you'd want
want that man in there. Yeah. I think your leading scores on 24 minutes without a point. Stewart, though, starting to do it up. Too strong with that one. Got a chance with the numbers again. Charles O'Bannon, dollar with the assist. You cannot afford to attack the basket with five men against UCLA because they can get out and run. Back shot, Robinson. We've seen him take that before. And there they go again. Get the numbers. They're so quick. They all can catch it on the run. Jim, that shot reminded me of the first half when Arkansas played the other day and took 22 threes by the wrong people at the wrong time and found themselves behind against North Carolina.
be the key for Arkansas to make their move. Because I'll tell you what's happening right now. UCLA will get over that fatigue factor and the fact that you just say, hey, this is the one we got to win. This is the national championship. You get so much adrenaline going, adrenaline going, you can overcome it. And Arkansas will start to get some doubts of can they pull it back. Okay. Well, that starts it. Way to come out of a timeout. And the Razorbacks were saying all weekend, we know we've been having to play from behind throughout the tournament, but we always feel like no matter what the deficit is, we're going to find a way to get it there. Get it back and win. A little bit different defensive look. Ed O'Bannon had a good look at that tip. Well, and Charles had an easy shot. We see the two three zone. Scotty Thurman hiding out in the corner. Nice pass. McDaniel. Ed O'Bannon has 10 rebounds. How about the decision making he made there? Instead of throwing it long, he wants to slow it down a little bit. Make sure they conserve some energy. And they can do that against the zone. Henderson, loose ball to McDaniel. Two straight times down four without converting. Stewart too long, but wins and with position, no call, but back to back, Thurman. You got it now, come on, hold it. Now, now, you know what, you heard Ed O'Banion say, hold it to his brother, meaning they don't want to run. Maybe Jim Herrick has said right now, I want to slow down the pace to conserve energy. Nice piece of coaching by Herrick. But you can't get too conservative too early, Jim. Two-point shot. Long rebound to Scotty. 65-56 UCLA. Three straight times down floor without a score for UCLA. You can't go into those drops like North Carolina did. Over 12 minutes without a field goal. Well, there hasn't been a whistle since out of that timeout. We're two minutes into it. Bruins haven't scored out of the timeout. Arkansas with four now. Jim Herrick has got to feel this a little bit himself. He changed the strategy in regard to the attack mode. He can't allow too big a run here. 8.30 remaining. Down to seven. Bruins led by as many as 12. Out to Dollar for a three. Saved underneath. Arkansas slips and steps on the line. UCLA ball. There's that number two rebounder. We had two teams in the final four where their guard was the number two rebounder. Rutherford from Oklahoma State and Vex for Arkansas. Very unusual.
second chance points tonight. UCLA with 25 to only six for Arkansas. Jim, those off the glass offensive putbacks in this half have been amazing, but now you're talking about a little bit tired team in terms of tired legs. The family of Tyus Edney, Mother Barbara on the left, Brother Russell, Father Hank, and a young man whose stomach probably turning in knots right now, wishing he could be out there. Tough break. Got it out, tried to go.
second. They called it actually, I guess, on the shot. I saw the first indication was on the drive. So one more part of the continuation of was he in the act of the shot. Only three of seven at the line. Now 50%. Four point UCLA lead. Push on by Dollar. 
And for Dollar, this becomes a concern. Four, four personal fouls of Cameron Dollar. Let's see if Jim Herrick tries to steal a little time with him because you want him in the, the game for the last minute. Jim, see if he tries to go back with Henderson so that he can have Dollar on the floor for the last minute. Corey Beck shooting one and one. One and one for Beck.
back three-pointer. He's hit eight out of ten in the tournament from three. And Ed O'Bannon will go to the line. How about finishing the thought about John Wooden? Well, I think, Jim, one of the things that Coach Wooden is known for is his pyramid of success. And it's a number of levels of success, but he talks about conditioning, skill, team spirit, poise, confidence, and then at the top of the pyramid is competitive greatness. And what we are seeing tonight, a team that entered this floor without their leader, without the guy that we all thought would be so critical to the game, without him, no chance. Competitive greatness at the top of that pyramid of success is what's brought this team on. Dick Daniel fouling out, ending his career. The senior had 16 tonight, all of them in the first half. O'Bannon will have two. Jim Harris says about Wooden, I love the guy. He's the wisest man I've ever known, and he taught me so much, hundreds of things. But the one thing he told me is if I listened to too much criticism, it would hurt my coaching. And if I listened to too much praise, it would hurt my coaching. There you can see Nolan obviously more than just concerned. Back again. Back slaps it out to Dillard. 11-point UCLA lead with a minute remaining.
UCLA has won the national championship for the 11th time in school history. And Jim Herrick, a magical night for your team, and you had to do it without the guy who got you here. I think he had the best tournament of any player of the 64 teams up till tonight. But what a gutty performance by the rest of our guys. I, I'm so proud of them. They just sucked it up and played hard and, and uh, ran everything we wanted and guarded the three. And, and it was a great question. question. When did you know, first of all, he was in trouble? And then when did you know you were going to have to take him out of the game and, and sit him? Well, when, right before he warmed up, I knew we couldn't play. I started him, but I knew he couldn't play. Tyus, how tough was that to sit over there knowing guys like Eddie were going to have to carry the load? Oh, it was, it, was, it was a bad feeling to know that I couldn't play in this game, but I have confidence in my guys. They played without me before. I knew they could do it. Ed really stepped up. Everybody, all of them, Cam, all the freshmen, everyone really just stepped up. And when I saw them playing as hard as they were, I knew we were, we were going to have a problem. Great job getting them here. They carried you the rest of the No question. Billy, we have, we have uh, Ed O'Bannon over here closing out a college career tonight. And you guys had to do it without Tyus. What was it like for you guys tonight coming into this one without your floor general? Uh, well, we stayed positive the whole time. You know, uh, we put everything in God's hands. Uh, we walk by faith, not by sight. That's, that's, that's how it is. That's what, that's, we've been doing that the whole year. And uh, everybody stayed together. Tyus is behind us. He brought us here. MVP goes to Tyus Edmonds. Tyus is the man. Load up. Eddie, congratulations, Charles. Camera, get in here. How about, how about this night for you? and perform like I did. Um, I owe a lot to Tyus. The two years that he's been with me, he taught me a lot, and I was able to apply today. Big Yuri, George, Tyus was your roommate when you came to school. You guys tonight really shut down Corliss Williamson like we had never seen before. How did you do it? Well, I just played, played him as tough as I could, and I tried to move my feet, and I did it. I don't even know how I did it, but I shot him down. We play hard. We play hard and we show everybody that we got hard. That's right, baby. We proved all the critics wrong. That's right. We showed them what the West, Bas West Coast basketball is all about. But we are the best conditioning team in the nation. Oh, well, there's, some, there's some nets waiting for you. Go tear down the net. UCLA has won the national championship. I know you love this night, Billy. It was great being here with you. Pat O'Brien will be coming up when we continue from the kingdom after this message and a word from your local station. Outside the locker room and said, fellas, it's only a pickup game. And for their efforts tonight, they're about to pick up a national championship trophy. Let's go down to the voice of the final four and Frank Ballard. Your attention, please. Now to present the championship awards tonight. Here's the chairman of the NCAA Division I men's basketball committee, Mr. Bob Frederick. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the NCAA Division I men's basketball committee, I'd like to congratulate both teams on an outstanding effort tonight and throughout the tournament. It's my pleasure at this time to present the National Championship Trophy to Coach Jim Herrick and the UCLA Bruins.
Guess who, folks? Ed O'Bannon, 30.16 rebounds. And how many Ed O'Bannons are on the floor tonight? You think? <laughs> well, it looked like he was all over the place. But I've got to say, when you talk about champions, one of the things that has to be there is heart. There was great character on the part of UCLA Bruins. They had an out. When Ty Sidney was not a part of that team, they deserved to win this game. You know, that, not the joke, but the talk has always been, well, you at UCLA coach wins this one, and now they say, well, win me nine more. Do you think the monkey is off Herrick's back? For, for well, there should have never been a monkey on his back, Pat. Uh, Jim Herrick showed throughout, the, not just this tournament, but the whole season what an excellent coach he is. To lose Edney going into this championship game, their team had a chance to rationalize and say, well, we've come this far, now we have an excuse. Right. I think the leader of that team was Jim Herrick, and he never let them rationalize. And the leader of the Arkansas Razorbacks, who got his respect last year and had it all this season, what a great season they had. After the game, Michelle Tafoya caught up with Nolan Richardson. All right, Coach, not the interview you wanted to be doing tonight. What happened? Well, uh, you know, UCLA played a great ball game. Uh, uh, I think all their kids played exceptionally well. Uh, uh, we were not uh, an effective in the half court. Uh, they did a great job on Corliss. Uh, we didn't shoot the ball outside as well. So uh, you've got to congratulate uh, Coach Herrick and his ball club. They just played lights out. You will be losing six seniors after tonight. What can you say about them? Well, I tell you, I'm very proud of our kids. And I told them that prior to the game. I says, just being here, uh, after all the pressure you guys has gone through, I mean, it, we might be able to escape one more time. but. Uh, uh, you got to remember that this is one of the finest seasons uh, that I've ever been around with guys that had to work so hard, and I, I'm very proud of that bunch. Congratulations on a great season, Coach. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you really think about it, there is nothing wrong with being number two. Back with one shining moment after this. UCLA. Number 11 is ironic because that's Tyus Edney's number. They did it without him, but they wouldn't have got here without that player. This was a great tournament and a great ending for the 1995 basketball season. Quinn, it's been great working with you this couple of weeks. Had a lot of fun. Coach, it's always great to have you on the set. You going to be here next year? Yeah, I'm going to be here. I, after being, especially working with you guys, it gives me incentive to go back to coaching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you happy to leave us? Yes, I yes, am. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, after, thank you guys, after 63 games, including uh, tonight's battle of college basketball heavyweights, we have a winner and a new champion, the UCLA Bruins. And as we offer our congratulations to Coach Jim Herrick and his players and fans, we also want to offer our thanks to the many folks who labor long and hard to bring you March Madness. And in keeping with our CBS Sports tradition, here now is one last look back, set to what has become our tournament anthem, One Shining Moment. Teddy Pendergrass does the honors. It's been a great couple of weeks. Good night, everybody. <laughs>